feel like I've been set up. Kia ora koutou. It's been an incredibly rich day and as Chair of NASLA, National and State Libraries Australasia, I'm delighted of the part we've played in, in making this happen. Uh, digital citizenship is such a core issue uh, for all of us internationally and especially in the three countries represented here today. National and State Libraries Australasia, if you're not as familiar with it as some of us, is a very powerful alliance of the National Libraries of New Zealand and Australia and the State and Territory Libraries in Australia, the, the 10 leading libraries in the jurisdictions in Australasia. It's existed for a long time, but over the last decade has uh, gathered renewed energy and a very strong partnership. Coming into my role as State Librarian in New South Wales four years ago, it was a tremendous joy to see the way that NASLA has involved staff throughout our organisations and we're working together to tackle big issues but also smaller, more contained issues. Our strategic plan focuses on shared solutions, the things that we can do best together or only do together, and on communication and influence. And today we've been talking about both of those. So I'll just remind you of the day. Minister Peter Dunn uh, enjoined us not to mention the rugby and people followed his advice. He must be a, a politician of singular talent. He did a wonderful riff on uh, linked up, loud and literate and it, it set the tone for the day, um, encouraging us to be loud, to emphasise being linked up and to keep literacy in our focus, as we did indeed. DIA Chief Executive Colin MacDonald um, mentioned the amazing figure of 78% of people who trust in the New Zealand Government. I don't think that would be quite so true over the ditch and reminded us of the importance of trust and gave us that wonderful conundrum of personal services delivered by impersonal means. Alison Doby from Auckland gave a powerful speech on the role of libraries, particularly in presenting government information and technology and access to services, including such things as employment services, reflecting on the long history going back to the days of typewriters and emphasising a core principle of the library profession, the right to know. Sue McCarriger from the Australian Library and Information Association provided us with what she called a reality check from the Australian reality and the salutary comment that the people who would most benefit from the internet have the least access to it. They are the most poorly served. She spoke of a framework for digital inclusion in the library context and that was followed of course by a vibrant discussion. Elaine Ng from the National Library Board in Singapore talk of, talked of the role of libraries, Singapore's smart nation vision, and reflected powerfully on citizen responsibility, citizen engagement, citizen participation, and the government's responsibility. Kevin Lavery from Wellington Council spoke about organisational transformation, disruption, and big data and reminded us that at the core is the citizen, as he put it, empower the customer. And he too gave us a salutary reminder about seeing opportunities with the old joke about uh, shoes. Philippa Scarf, my colleague from the State Library of New South Wales, spoke of find legal answers and drug info. And illustrated that there are solutions. There are solutions that help us to deliver informed digital citizenship. Supported in our case across a very big and diverse state. And she emphasised the importance of PACE, part partnership, agreements, communication and evaluation. Craig Thomner said the walls of the library should not define its reach in the community. We need to 
get out of the library or extend the library out across the community and spoke of libraries as an enabler of citizens' full participation. The thought leaders for the workshop session on lifelong learning and the digital self, skills and awareness, uh, set the scene for us and vibrant discussions followed. Andrew Cowie um, took us into the thought bubble and the need for critical thinking. Debbie Roxburgh, cyber safety and ethical use of information. And the wonderful expression, digital tattoos, and the difficulty of removing them. I think I'll steal that. <laughs> cyber bullying and the need to integrate digital citizenship into the curriculum. George Dunsford spoke of developing digital skills among staff and clients and particularly focused on older people, although in discussions that was somewhat challenged. Anita Planchon spoke of literacy in a technologically rich world, the importance of reach and the achievements of the 2610 program in Tasmania. From the reporting back, I grabbed a few phrases, growing in capability and confidence, intergenerational experiences, raising the profile of the issue with government, which I hope that we've done uh, in part today, the power of the prevailing orthodoxy and the dangers of that. And then in the session we've just had, Chris Seekley from the Alexander Turnbull Library spoke of, of the Treaty of Waitangi and Māori, the involvement of the library and other organs of government and the community in treaty and settlement processes, in digital repatriation and the key issue of language revitalisation. Lucy Liang from Tetari Matawaka spoke of the library as the first positive experience of many new arrivals in New Zealand a very uplifting thought, but also challenged us to address the challenges of language, acting as an enabler and engaging with ethnic people. Courtney Johnston from the Dow Art Museum gave us a salutary reminder of the opportunities and dangers in big data for cultural institutions. And another phrase I'll probably steal, we kill people based on metadata. My comment from the floor for the day was from Philip Van Zyl, where he uh, pointed out the deficiencies of the national census in uh, missing Tongan people in his community. A good reminder to those of us who do deal with data. And finally, I must give my thanks to the NSLA Literacy and Learning Group, and specifically the working group members, Corin Haynes, Elizabeth Jones, Indira Neville, Anita Planchon, Rebecca Ong, and the wonderful Barbara Lemon, who has been based here at the National Library of New Zealand uh, for the last three months, um, reinforcing and strengthening the binational nature of NASLA. Thanks also to Amy Said and Colleen Slater for their administrative support. And big thanks to Bill McNaught and your staff here who even made the sunshine for us. <laughs> and finally, the Maori proverb uh, quoted by Chris, the old net is cast aside while the new net goes fishing. Let's go fishing.